Hi, welcome to this video. In the past two years, our team have been promoting ARM architecture in the several Apache projects and corresponding with open source communities. In the next 30 minutes, we will share the work we have done for ARM support in Apache communities. Okay, let's start. First, we'd like to do a brief self-introduction. Hello, my name is Martin Grigorov, a software developer from Bulgaria. I'm a member of Apache Wicket, Apache Tomcat, and Apache ISIS projects. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the continuous integration systems used at Apache. Hi, I'm Jiang Yikun from Huawei. I'm a senior software engineer. I was OpenStack Center project co-member and now focus on ARM and big data open source projects. Hi everyone, I'm Liu Sheng. I'm a software engineer from Huawei. I was devoted to open source software in past eight years. Currently, I'm mainly working on ARM support for popular open source projects. In this presentation, I will also introduce what we have done about ARM support for Apache projects. The content would be divided at five parts. In the first part, we will introduce the background and motivation, including the original intention and why we want to do it. And the second part, I and my partner Liu Sheng will introduce what we have done and take Hadoop as a typical case to give audience some basic idea about how we make efforts for availability and usability under the ARM architecture. Final part, Martin will share some more typical cases and give some more detailed introdu introduction about the ARM CI info from Apache Foundation. Finally, we will share some problems and the future steps for Apache Project ARM support. Over the past few decades, we have experienced technology booming and the innovation start are so fast, beyond anyone's imagination. 30 years ago, personal computers are very expensive that only government and organization can afford. Before we can notice, smartphones bring us into the mobile internet era, and computing have been moved from the personal desktop to mobile. And then we enter the intelligent era with all things connected. In this era, everyone is talking about cloud, AI, IoT, and big data. In order to match these rapidly growing user scenarios, the computing power demand had been also growing rapidly in the past few decades too. On the other hand, there are also various innovations on computing architecture that can help break the bottlenecks of low power and boost the performance of traditional architectures. We believe that make the most use of diversified computing is the key to fulfill the increasing computing and power demands. When people talking about make use of diversity computing, they can mean different things. A more traditional idea is to compare different types of computing results. A lot of projects have already done this. They can help users to use GPA, FPGA for any other diversified hardware to improve their software performance, such as we can use the GPU and boost the parallel computing in AI tasks. But in this session, I want to just focus on general purpose CPU only. Actually, in the CPU world, there are also different type of net architectures that have their own unique properties. Such as as well-known x86, ARM, res 5, and PowerPC. Among all those CPU architectures, the 686 is for sure the most popular one, especially in the open source world. And today, I want to talk about how we add ARM into open source world. 
there are already have many ARM chips from kinds of companies on the market, like data center chips Quinpeng from Huawei, Graven2 from Cloud Giant AWS, and also recent Apple Silicon announced the M1 chip published. So we believe the ARM chips would be a very big part of member on the CPU market in the near future. And also, the software is a very important part of computing. How can we improve the ARM support for various software? The first thing we do is that in A over ARM in upstream development workflow. Let me show you details. In the typical open source development workflow, when the developer wants to contribute some code to an open source project, he have to write the code and run local tests in their local environment. After everything is checked, here he can push the code to remote repos, such as GitHub. The code would be also rebased to open source main branch and do a double test it in there. After that, the code would be merged in the project main branch. After a certain period of time, the release and the package would be published in their official website or somewhere the user can download the package directly. All those can guarantee the quality of software continuously. Since x86 is a major product on the market in the past, x86 environment is a default architecture of workflow, including developer local environment, a testing machine, and build machine. So for x86 users, the quality is good for sure. But for ARM users or users of other platform, there may be problem because the software are not test and built from native soft platform. So in order to provide quality assurance for ARM platform, the first thing we should do is that add ARM resources to the workflow and run the same test to achieve the same high quality for ARM users. And that's exactly what we did. Just like this slideshow, we should build and run tests to make sure it can be worked in ARM server. That means we should fix all the issues in those types. And after that, we need also add the ARM CI into workflow in upstream communities to make sure the workflow wouldn't be break again in the following coming code. This code from all contributors over the world. As shown in the left picture, it's a landscape for ARM support. You can see most popular projects in Apache has ARM support. Also, we have done many performance improvements in Apache related projects. You could see more detailed info in right link. Okay. Next, I will invite my partner Liu Sheng to introduce some typical cases and best practices. Hi, thanks for Equins over our introduction. Here I will continue to talk about what we have done and illustrate by a typical case. As Equin just talked, the ARM CI is an important circle for promoting ARM support for open source projects. Well, for most open source projects, their communities do not have ARM resource to build ARM CI. To help them um, uh, build ARM CI, we have donated uh, some ARM resource to their communities. Here are some examples. We have provided two ARM server to Apache Infra team and promote to configure ARM CI for Hadoop and HBase projects. Now the two projects run daily ARM CI tasks on the two servers. We have also tried to promote ARM CI in Spark community and provided the ARM server to Berkeley and PNAB, which Spark CI ran on. We have also have we also have self-maintained CI infra infrastructure named the OpenLab, the OpenLab CI environment. We have added the ARM resource pool to run ARM CI tasks. It's also open for uh, every open source project's integration. Additionally, we have also directly donated ARM servers to some open source uh, community to help them build ARM CI, such as MirrorDB, RocksDB, uh, and Memcached. Recently, we have also provided six ARM servers to Consensual uh, community to help them build ARM CI. Okay, then please let me to introduce a typical case about Hadoop ARM support. How you can see, at 2020 June 14, Hadoop community has published the first ARM support 
release of version 3.30 and officially provided the ARM platform binary package. If you want to try, you can directly download the ARM platform binary package from the Hadoop site. Actually, a few days ago, Hadoop community had also released a version 3.31 uh, version uh, with ARM binary package. Okay, firstly, let's take a brief look about the process of uh, ARM supporting Hadoop communities. At 2019 uh, June, we have created the first issue at Jira to ask about uh, ARM supporting Hadoop community. This is also the first uh, attempt to promote ARM supporting Apache community. At 2019, August, we have shared all our ARM supporting plan and current status at, at the Hadoop meetup at Beijing. Uh, at, uh, at 2020, January 6, Hadoop um, CI has officially uh, enabled. At 2020, July 14, the first Hadoop ARM release was published with 3.30 version. This is a sign that we, the most popular Apache project Hadoop has officially supported. ARM's platform. Please let, uh, let me to talk more details about Hadoop ARM support. During promoting ARM support of Hadoop, we firstly have opened the Jira issues and mail thread in Hadoop DV mailing list to discuss about ARM CI in Hadoop communities. Uh, there are many developers have given suggestions and welcome, um, welcome us to support ARM platform. When we tried to build and run Hadoop on ARM server, we found several problems. Uh, here are some examples. The protobuf with version 2.5.0, which is used by Hadoop in many components. But uh, version 2.5.0 uh, does not support ARM platform, and the newer version 3.7.1 has support ARM platform. So we have upgraded version of Protobuf in Hadoop to 3.7.1 that need to also need to modify code in many components. Uh, similarly, the native or oh, the NeverDB Jinai, the Phantom JS libraries, which are also used by Hadoop and does not support uh, ARM platform, we have proposed to change in Hadoop or even in the dependency projects to fix. Uh, the Hadoop, uh, Hadoop ARM CI uh, also help Hadoop community to identify potential issues of Hadoop itself. Uh, and, and also, we have added two features in Hadoop, the NVDM support in Hadoop and the SM4 feature. Okay, for the step, we have also done some performance testing and tuning uh, of Hadoop on ARM servers. The code C libraries are an important factor to affect the performance in Hadoop workloads. The ZSTD, the Snappy, uh, the Zlib or Glib are three more, most, most common used code C libraries in Hadoop. <coughs> For ZSTD, we have proposed to change the in ZSTD, which improve about 3.3% uh, speed up in creation and more than uh, 13 percent speed up in decompression. For Snappy, we have forked the Snappy and done many changes which made more than 10 percent speed up in compression and more than 9 speed up, percent speed up in decompression. For ZDP, there is a uh, specific hardware support for features of Huawei Quimpon server. The KAE Quimpon Accelerator Engine, which used the hardware boost to the compression, reduced CPU utilization that make a huge improvement, uh, more than 13 times speed up in compression and more than seven times speed up in decompression. Based on the performance turning in code C libraries, we have also done Hadoop workload performance tuning with applying, applying the code C libraries. The testing environment spec is uh, uh, 32 vCPUs and uh, 64 GB memories and uh, 500 SSD with the Ubuntu um, 
point for this term. We use the Terasort tool to do perform performance benchmark. The benchmark data is uh, 50, 50 GB data generated by Terragen tool. Here you can see when you use the ZLIP as Hadoop could see, according to the benchmark results, the Terasort end-to-end -end speed up uh, more than 40% with ZLIP KA enabled and the speed up more than 10% with Snappy uh, enabled, which is optimized uh, with our uh, trends. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Please, Martin, introduce the rest content. In the second use case, I'll talk about the Apache Geo project. Apache Geo is an SQL query engine for NoSQL databases like HBase, Hive, Elasticsearch, MongoDB, and file systems like Hadoop File System, Amazon S3, Azure Blob Storage, Google Cloud Storage, and many more. It is written in Java language. The Java Virtual Machine already supports ARM64 architecture on Linux, but still, there were a few things that needed to be improved to be able to build and run the test on Apache Drill, of Apache Drill on this platform. The first issue that I faced was that few of the unit tests were failing with out of memory error in the native memory. That looked strange because I didn't expect different memory usage compared to x64 systems. It turned out that just the default JDM setting passed to Maven Surefire plugin was too low. Actually, the project was already using a bigger value in their current continuous integration configuration for x64. My first pull request was to update the value of the JVM setting in the Maven POM XML file so that the test passed without any changes. The second issue was that Jill was using flap to do Mongo library to run embedded MongoDB for its integration tests. flap to do Mongo does not support ARM64, there is no ARM64 binary in the jar file. Fortunately, a Jill committer was already working on replacing flap to do Mongo with test containers Mongo. The third issue was similar but for MySQL database. The project was using Wix embedded MySQL library that is based on Flapdoodle process library and has the same problem as with Mongo. Wix embedded MySQL is not maintained since few years, so in my second pull request to Geo project, I replaced it with test containers MySQL. But the next minor issue here was that MySQL project was, has only x64 docker image at docker hub. So I had to use MariaDB image when running the test on ARM64. The last issue was with the Splunk storage module. Here, Drill was already using test container Splunk, but there is no ARM64 docker image for Splunk in their docker hub repository. I've created a ticket at Splunk Docker GitHub repository and disabled the integration test for Splunk storage module in Joule until an ARM64 Docker image is provided. With this, all issues of Apache Joule on Linux ARM64 were fixed. Here is the timetable of all main points. I started testing Joule on my ARM64 machine at April 28. I've reported the issues on their developer mailing list on the next day. In this mail thread, we also discussed what continuous integration system to use to cover Linux ARM64 and prevent regressions in the future. The project decided to use Travis CI. The developers had moved away from Travis CI to GitHub Action several months ago, but since <coughs> GitHub Actions does not yet support ARM64, they agreed to use Travis CI only for ARM64. Until May 19th, all pull requests have been merged and Travis CI have been re-enabled. The developer information on Jill's website has been updated, mentioning that all pull requests are automatically tested on x64 at GitHub Actions and on ARM64 at Travis CI. At June 15th, Jill 119th has been released with an announcement that Linux ARM64 is officially supported. Continuous integration systems at Apache. Let's review what are the available continuous integration systems at Apache. 
Jenkins. It's hosted by Clouds, CloudBees and managed by Apache Infra Team. Jenkins supports ARM64 by delegating tasks to Jenkins agents, agents running on Linux ARM64 machines. It's very easy to deploy built artifacts like snapshots and Java docs to Apache machines like Maven Nexus or projects websites. The job could run for as long as needed. The time can be tuned by the developers. In the past, most of the Apache projects were using Jenkins and the queue and build times were longer. But lately, many projects moved to GitHub Actions and this reduced the load on Jenkins. Jenkins could be easily extended with plugins could, which could be installed by Apache Infra Team. There, are no S, there is no SSH access to the Jenkins agent, so it's not possible to debug failing jobs. Some projects use dedicated machines for their projects as Jenkins agents, so a developer could connect to these machines. BuildBot It's hosted on-premise at Apache machines and managed by Apache Infra Team. The currently installed version of BuildBot 08 does not support ARM64 builders, but Apache Infra Team works on upgrading it to BuildBot version 3 and this issue with will, will be gone soon. Again, it's very easy to deploy build artifacts. Just like Jenkins, a developer could specify the maximum amount of time for each build job. There are not so many projects using BuildBot, so the jobs are executed quickly. As far as I know, there is no way to extend BuildBot by using plugins. The build configuration syntax is Python-like, so one could script almost anything. There is no way to connect to BuildBot build bot Builder to debug issues. GitHub Actions, managed by GitHub at Microsoft. Apache Software Foundation is just a user there. There is no official way to run jobs on ARM64 because GitHub does not provide such hardware. But there is a way to execute jobs on remote ARM64 Kubernetes cluster. I will explain how in a minute. At the moment, there is no easy way to copy build artifacts to Apache machines without compromising security. There is a Jira ticket for Infra Team to create and expose a token that will be shared by all projects. The ma maximum amount for a job to finish is 19 minutes. If the job could not finish in that duration, it will be killed automatically. Almost 300 pro Apache projects use GitHub Actions, so their rush hours when queue time is quite high. GitHub Actions is extensible via, via Actions. Due to, the secu to security concerns, only pre-selected actions are allowed to be used. If one needs to use a new action, then he or she needs to contact Apache Infra Team to enable it. It's not possible to connect to the GitHub machines for debugging. Travis CI. Travis CI is managed by Travis CI company, supports several CPU architectures, x64, ARM64, IBM PowerPC and IBM Z. At the moment, there is no easy way to copy build artifacts to Apache machines without compromising security. The maximum amount of time for a job to finish is 50 minutes. This is the shortest job time for all CIs. Lately, many Apache and open source Software projects moved away from Travis CI because the quality of their service dropped a lot. Since the transition of, from TravisCI.org to TravisCI.com, even it's not free anymore but trial only. There is no way to extend Travis CI via plugins. There is no way to debug on Travis CI machines. Circle CI. It's managed by Circle CI company supports x64 and ARM64 architectures. At the moment, there is no easy way to copy build artifacts to Apache machines without compromising security. The maximum amount of time for a job is 120 minutes. Just a few Apache projects use Circle CI, so there is almost no wait time. It's extensible via ORPS, it's similar to GitHub Actions. actions. One can connect to the build machine via SSH and the bug explorer there. And this way one could use an R machine for testing new ideas. 
This makes Circle CI my recommendation for any project that wants to build and test on ARM64. Azure Pipelines, it's managed by Microsoft, it supports ARM64 by using self-hosted build nodes. At the moment, there is no easy way to copy build artifacts to Apache machines without compromising security. The maximum amount of time for a job is 360 minutes. Just a few Apache projects use Azure Pipeline, so there is no wait time. It's extensible via action-like extensions. The bugging is possible only on your own nodes. That is, it's possible for ARM64 self-hosted nodes. <clears throat> Since most of the Apache projects use GitHub Actions where ARM64 is not supported architecture, we had to be creative and provide a way to build and test on Linux ARM64. We did it by delegating the job to a remote Kubernetes cluster at Huawei Cloud. The idea is to use camo bin format on GitHub Actions to create a new Docker ARM64 image with the project's source code copied into it, <coughs> install all needed build tools and finally run the Docker container on the Kubernetes cluster. You can read all the details about it at the following URL. The article also links to a demo project. If you need access to ARM64 hardware for your open source project, you could apply here at Open Lab, text, uh, open lab Testing host host works on ARM. You need to provide details about your projects and you'll be considered. Here are the most common obstacles we have faced during our interaction with different communities. ARM is mostly known, known from mobile devices and is still considered a second-class citizen on the server side. Since there were no users complaining of any issues on ARM64, there is a lack of interest to work on support for ARM between, in between developers. Developers don't have access to ARM machines and cannot test their software on it. Third-party dependencies don't support ARM, ARM well, so you might need to wait your third-party dependencies to be updated first. Many developers don't have experience with the low-level differences between the different CPU architectures. Fortunately, the programming language compilers and interpreters deal with these low-level details, details and our high-level software just uses, uses it for free. Here are a few examples where community members rightfully explain their reasons not to enable continuous integration for ARM64. Currently, we have several open pull requests to Apache projects which still haven't decided whether they want to add continuous integration on ARM64. At the time of recording this presentation, Apache Mesos is in the process of adding Jenkins agents on ARM. We have some more Apache and other open source software projects for which we would like to add support for ARM64. That's all from us. Please let us know if you have any questions. We will be happy to answer them. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your patience. And thanks for Liu Sheng and Martin awesome share. We will left two minutes for question and answer. If you guys have any question, you could feel free to comment.